the attacker's close friend, named as Abdul Hakim A, a 20-year-old of Chechen origin from Strasbourg, was retained in custody until Thursday. He was arrested by heavily armed, masked police on Sunday at his home in the eastern city. Police recovered seven cell phones during a search of his home but were unable to locate the main phone he used most often. Always together, Saturday's knife rampage followed a series of jihadist assaults that have now claimed 246 lives in France since 2015, including the Paris attacks of that year and the truck ramming attack targeting Bastille Day revelers in Nice in 2016. As Amoub's family later moved to Paris, where they were renting rooms in the 18th arrondissement. As a move had been on both of France's main watch lists for suspected radicals since 2016, the so-called S-file and a more targeted file for the prevention of terrorist radicalization, FSPRT, which focuses on people judged to be terror threats. The government has come under fire over the fact that Azimov had been flagged as a suspected extremist, just the same as several others behind deadly attacks including the brothers who carried out the Charlie Hebdo gun massacre in 2015. Is claim, Azimov became a French citizen in 2010 after his mother was naturalized. Hundreds of fighters from Chechnya have joined Islamist militant groups in recent years, following two bloody separatist wars against Russia. AMAC, the IS propaganda agency, released a video Sunday in which it claimed responsibility for the attack, with footage claiming to show Azimov pledging allegiance to the jihadist group. In Paris, witnesses said Azimov walked along stabbing people and yelling, Allahu Akbar, God is greatest. The seriously injured included a 34-year-old Chinese man who lives in Luxembourg and a 54-year-old woman. Two others were lightly wounded but all four are out of danger. The 29-year-old man who was killed has been identified as Ronan, whose neighbors in Paris's 13th arrondissement posted a letter announcing his death in the hall of their building. Eric Gunnard, a nearby restaurant owner, described him as discreet, quiet but always smiling. It was like a smile was part of his DNA.